All right, guys, a rundown on my first ever hammer that I have ever forged first. I don't know if you can get shadow banned for having these, but uh, it's likely in this day and age. Oh well, they're not going anywhere. So don't forget to like and share this video. So, um, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? How do I like it? So I forged uh, four little Puko knives and a big 10 inch blade knife so far with it. And I feel confident in discussing a little bit about the hammer here. Um, so first of all, the weight, uh, five, it came out at five and five pounds, five ounces. So roughly five and a third pounds. So we lost about three, three and a half ounces of material during the forging process. Five and a half pounds. Some people will say, oh, that's too big. I don't need a hammer that big. And the people that say that, and no, no offense, but the people that say that haven't been forging long enough or regularly enough. Um, after you use a hammer for years, it took me years, uh, frequently enough, you develop muscles, and I'm not talking about getting giant arms, I'm talking about like your nervous system and the way your body works. You develop muscles that a four pound hammer is light. And then, you know, a five pound hammer is, is workable. And so for a long time I used, I think it's like a two and a half, two and three quarter pound hammer or something like that, two and a half pound hammer. I don't remember, but much lighter than this. And uh, I used that for quite a while, for years. And then I kind of graduated to the uh, four pound hammer. So you basically get to a point where you realize that, um, you know, you've grown into that size of hammer and to move steel more efficiently, you either have to get a heavier hammer or hit it harder. And if you have to put an excess amount of force behind your blow, um, that means you don't have a heavy enough hammer. Because if you're gonna do that in order to move the steel appropriately, you're gonna wear yourself out and put undue stress on your joints. Whereas getting a heavier hammer that, yes, it, it's uh, more of a workout in that sense, it is doing more of the work through the inertia. And so you're not slamming that down as hard as you can just to get the uh, desired uh, work out of it. So that's just a little bit about hammer weight. It's really nice having these uh, longer sides here to use as dies, the most efficient way to draw out materials to tip that, literally tip that hammer kind of quarter turn. You can use it literally like this and drive that corner down on your material and it really that's the quickest way to move material um, whether it's on the flat side which is not perfectly flat but mostly flat or the rounding side and either works well. Um, so I'm enjoying that. It's definitely nice to have that feature as well. I like the finish on it, how it turned out, the forge finish. Did some wire brushing on it, obviously. Finished out the uh, faces here. Um, I think I got the temper, if anything, it might be a teensy bit soft, um, but that's better than being too hard. I tempered it out at 325 for two hours, and um, Seems to, it's it's well it's working well. There's um, it does it's soft enough to take some some uh, surface deformations, you know, on, with little bits of scale and stuff. Um, so it could be maybe a tiny bit harder. I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty good hardness as it is, I think. So things I did wrong and things that maybe you can look out for is I don't know if I got my hole drifted slightly off or if I when I forged like these. Uh, um, these areas here, forge those down if I kind of cockeyed things and got the eye slightly off. Or if when I made my handle, I kind of did it backwards and I, I um, shaped the portion that's gonna go into the eye and then I shaped the rest of the handle. I think if I started out with a straight, um, true piece of wood and then forge the eye section off of that, that would keep everything straight and true. Um, as it is, I'm not entirely sure what I did there, but the handle kind of goes off to this angle just a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it and it's kind of driving me crazy. Uh, in the actual use, I really don't notice it at all. Um, so, I, you know, at some point I'll put a new handle on this, I'm sure, maybe sooner than later. The other thing is, um, 
forging this surface here for the rounding portion, it's, uh, it's overall wider here than, than the flat side. And that's simply, I could just grind it down more out to this, make more of a radius here, which is a good thing anyway, and bring the, the dimension down a little bit. So that's something I could definitely do. Um, but yeah, the eye, the eye being slightly off or the handle, one or the other, it's kind of bugging me. Um, anyway, as far as the function goes, it's, uh, it's working nicely. And so no complaints there. I, I, uh, I did a better job of putting the handle on this time, I think. Got a nice deep wedge. Of course, I've, I've got more distance here, obviously. And I didn't try to put in a steel wedge which I guess if you do it right, you shouldn't need one anyway. But I let the glue dry overnight, holding that wedge in there better, and then I put some linseed oil on it, so that should, that should last better, and, and otherwise it's just it's doing just fine. So, there's the rundown, and um, is, is uh, from four pounds to five and a third pounds, uh, that might be a little bit big of a jump, I'm not sure, depends on how much forging you do. But um, it's working well so far, and I'm enjoying the, uh, the different functions that it does. It, you know, the, the weight is nice. It's noticeable. You can get more work done with this thing, so I'm enjoying that. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something about building hammers that you didn't know before. Anyway, appreciate you being here as always, and we'll see you on the next video.